The following program presents principles designed to promote good health. It should not take the place of personal professional care. Viewers should always consult their qualified health practitioner before considering alternative treatment. Working out, cleaning the board. And we've got something behind here that's the most effective, it's called soap and water. <laughs> so we're going to begin looking, or continue I should say, looking at some of the causes. And what I'd like to write down here is some of the causes of diabetes. And wheat and sugar are big contributing factors. Another contributing factor is dairy. And in the book, The China Study, Dr. Colin Campbell, he explains this one. When a human takes dairy, in the majority of cases, it's difficult to break down because we haven't got the five stomachs. And so molecules come into the blood that aren't properly broken down and the body creates antigens to deal with them. Now their molecular structure is very similar to the molecular structure of the beta cells in the pancreas. And so these pathogens, they're wiping out these molecules from the partially broken down milk and then they look over at the pancreas and start to break down the beta cells in the pancreas. I hope I didn't lose you with that one. <laughs> and so dairy is a big contributing factor. Colin Campbell states that children that have cow's milk in the first year of life have a 70% greater risk of developing type 1 diabetes. And yet what would most children have for breakfast? Cereal, milk and sugar. That's what I had as a child, yeah? So, there, so that's another causative factor. Number three is drugs. Many drugs have as their side effect an effect on the beta cells in the pancreas to break them down. There is much research today, and I know a, a Dr. Glassons from America, he pioneered a lot of this research in about the 80s that the polio vaccine was causing the type 1 diabetes. That's quite alarming, isn't it? Do you know the health department have put a statement out in the last few days that the only cases of polio around today are from the polio vaccine. Polio was wiped out before vaccines came in. Quite alarming, isn't it? The human body was designed to heal itself and it'll heal itself if you give it the right conditions. And I had a lady ring me up with a 16 month old child with diabetes and she said it developed after her, her uh, vaccinations. Now there are children that are vaccinated that don't have diabetes. It's, it's another, it's like this really, it's the best way to explain it. A whole lot of little threads come together to make a strong rope and a strong man cannot break that rope but a little mouse that that strong man could step on and squash can start eating at all those little threads. And the rope that the strong man could not break, that little mouse successfully does by nibbling at those threads. We are a combination of a whole lot of bits and pieces, aren't we? And that's why I believe we should be the doctor. Where to put the detective hat on and thread all of those threads? Another cause of diabetes is the bleach that they bleach flour with. Now flour, or wheat flour, or even spelt flour, kamut flour, if the, if the bran and the wheat germ are taken out, it's almost the colour of the inside of my skin there, like a light, light uh, beige colour. And so they wanted the wheat or the flour white, so they bleach it with a bleach called aloxin. And aloxin, the research is showing now, kills the beta cells in the pancreas. So another reason why this wheat is contributing to it. And so number one to get a turnaround with diabetes is the wheat and the sugar must stop, the dairy must shock, stop, and ideally the drugs stop. 
Now some people are on medications that cannot be stopped straight away. Some medications can be stopped straight away and that's why it is good to get some advice on that. The medications that must not be stopped straight away are things like antidepressants, things like your cortisone drugs. There can be a major reaction if you stop them. What we do at Misty Mountain Health for True is we get people to begin implementing lifestyle changes. The body gets strong, the body starts working better and then they can ease off the medications. That's probably the best way to do it. But if you are on medication, it is good to get advice on, uh, on how that can be taken off, especially if a person has been on it for years. Tomorrow night when I look at heart health, I'll be directly um, addressing things like cholesterol lowering medication, blood thinning medication and blood pressure medication. So we'll be, we'll be looking at that tomorrow night. Regarding insulin, um, what I find when people come to our health retreat, within 38 hours they're having to reduce their medication because their blood sugar levels are going too low. And this young man, Dan, that I told you about, remember I said that every night he'd get a blood sugar level low. Do you know what that means? He's on too much insulin. By the third week, Dan had reduced, now this is type 1 diabetic, he'd reduced his insulin by 90%. That's in three weeks. That's incredible, isn't it? That so quickly he was getting those results. Now there was something else that he was doing. So we'll put here, eliminate. These are the things that must be eliminated is these three things here. Now we're going to go over what needs to be implemented. And this is eight glasses of water a day. Now, some people look at that and feel overwhelmed. In this weather, it's not hard though, is it? But in the middle of winter, <laughs> it's a little bit harder. Now, the best way to get that water in is little by little by little. One lady said, I can't drink water, it makes me feel sick. I can't drink water, it bloats me. And then I found out she would drink 500 mils all at once. Now if I have a plant that's a bit dry and I put 500 mils all in at once, what happens? Where does the water go? It all runs down the bottom. But if I come to that dry plant and put a little bit in and then a bit later a little bit more, I can get 500 mils into that plant without any overflow. So little by little by little. I find it difficult to drink a whole lot of water at once, but I've just got my water bottle always by me. I sip here, I have a little bit more there, I have a little bit more there. I just have it always by me. And you'll be amazed how much water you can get into your body. Have it in the car, have it at the desk, have it in the kitchen, have it out in the garden, just have it always there. A couple of sips at a time. And there is one way that you can get that water into the cell so that you're not visiting the little house all the time, so that the feet don't swell. I mentioned uh, in that question about the edema, and I'll look at it a little bit more tomorrow, we need to take the whole salt. Now whole salt, and I'll be looking at this in detail tomorrow note, whole salt is unrefined sea salt. And there's couple of ways we get it in Australia. One is Himalayan salt and another is Celtic salt. And Celtic salt is one of my favourites because it has three magnesiums in it. And it has, the Celtic salt has 82 minerals. Himalayan salt is very similar. Himalayan salt is certainly better than the refined salt. You know the refined salt has two minerals. And there's a verse in the Bible that talks about the salt. It's Matthew 5, 13. It's Jesus speaking. He says, Ye are the salt of the earth. If the salt has lost its savour, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under foot of men. <laughs> Just think of that when you look at that table salt. Henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under foot of men. We use it a little bit at our health retreat for the leeches put it on the leech, it gets off. No, we don't have many leeches, only when we have a lot of rain. <laughs> Good for nothing but the leech. 
You see, as I'll show you tomorrow night, because it's so imbalanced, it causes this big imbalance in the body. Now, Celtic salt has three magnesium, and magnesium pulls the water inside the cell. Remember the CBD? The CBD is where we need that water, and the magnesium pulls it inside the cell. So how do we take the salt? I take a crystal of Celtic salt on my tongue before every glass of water that I drink. Now I did say I sipped, but every time I start a new glass, I'll put a crystal on my tongue and I'll drink a few mouthfuls, then I'll drink a few more mouthfuls. When I've done a cup, then I'll have another crystal of salt. You see, we are so mineral deficient today because the soils are are deficient, the plants are deficient, and if you have a crystal of Celtic salt on your tongue before you drink every glass of water, all you will do is replace the minerals you lost yesterday. Especially do you need it in this hot weather because you are perspiring. Have you ever tasted your perspiration? It's very salty. So you think about it, we're salty people. We need that salt. And that salt allows the water be, to be taken inside the cell. Now this cell, I'm, a, I'm talking about your pancreatic cells. The pancreas cannot make these hormones to balance the blood sugar levels unless it has adequate minerals. And the best place, the cheapest place, the most effective place is in the salt because we need the minerals in a way that the body can use them. And because they are in the way that they are found in the body, when you take it, it, it liquefies and it, and it gets through the membrane of the cell, gets that water inside the cell. It's well documented, it's the quickest way to hydrate a body is to take that salt. If you were under the impression that salt was bad, and this is news to you, and you're used to no salt, my suggestion is start slowly. <laughs> Just have the tiniest little bit, because your body, one of the most amazing things about the body is its ability to adapt and adjust. And the body, if your body's had no salt, is it, it has adapted and adjusted to that, and as you'll see tomorrow night, at a cost, but now, if you want it to take the salt, which is a good idea to do because we need those minerals, there'll be a little bit of time getting the body to adapt and adjust back to that. But it is a delicious salt. It's very nice on your food as well, of course. So it's very important to take the salt. Another very important point of conquering diabetes, conquering weight, is exercise. And there is a type of exercise that gets the body up onto a more effective and better rate of running. There is a type of exercise that will stimulate the development of more insulin receptor sites. In a matter of days, you can conquer insulin resistance. Isn't that good news? If you implement the things I'm putting down here. Exercise. What is this interval training? Interval training, as the name implies, are intervals of high intensity and periods of recovery for a cycle. So a lot of the research with this has been done on exercise bikes because I can testify it's not easy to run for 30 seconds. If you think to yourself, she doesn't know what she's talking about, I want you to try it tomorrow. In fact, at 20 seconds, my body is screaming at me, stop. <laughs> But the type of exercise that's going to wake up that pancreas, the type of exercise that is going to wake up the insulin receptor sites on the cell and get them moving again is the type of exercise that's very, very hard work. It's going to get you out of your comfort zone. Now, if you can't run, exercise bike. Can't exercise bike, swim. Can't swim, uh, push-ups. Can't push-ups, mm, push-ups on the wall. Fit board, you just got to find out what works for you. It may be a good idea to go to a gym and try different pieces of equipment and see what works for you, then go home and 
We have uh, Gumtree or eBay in Australia. You can buy second-hand pieces of equipment. But the exercise bike most people find is the easiest way to do this high intensity. If you can't do 30 seconds high intensity, start with 10 or start with 15. But remember, don't stop when your body tells you to. You push yourself a little bit more. It's that pushing of yourself that strengthens that heart. And I'll talk about it in detail again tomorrow night. But it's that pushing of yourself that's going to waken up the insulin receptor sites on the cell and he's going to wake up that pancreas. Now Dan told me that his doctor told him his pancreas was dead. 20. I said, is it gangrene? What's dead? If there's blood and if there's lymph going through that pancreas, there's life and there is the ability to revive. The fact that he dropped his insulin by 90% by the third week is an indication of what's starting to work. The pancreas. He adjusted it according to his blood sugar levels. They kept going lower and lower, so he'd go less, less, and that's how you do it. 30 seconds high intensity, 90 seconds recovery for about a cycle of six. If at first you can't do a cycle of six, do a cycle of three. You've just got to start with where you're at. Dr. Al says in his book PACE, his PACE means progressive acceleration of cardiopulmonary exertion. You don't have to repeat that back to me. Progressive, that means what you can't do now, you'll be able to do in a few days. Have you done the maths on that? Impressive, isn't it? What's this, 10 minutes a day? Hmm? I'm, a, I'm a busy lady. I love it. <laughs> I used to do a half, I used to do 2K half hour walk. Now I do 15 minutes. That's all I do. But I, I incorporate the high intensity. You got to work and work hard. And when Dan came back from his morning walk, his clothes were wet <laughs> and he was like this. This is working hard. What sort of effort do you think the Olympian athletes put into their training? Mm -hmm. They put everything into it. Now, we're training for something more important than the Olympic Games. You know that. We're training for life. We're training for quality of life. And what you do to your body now will determine how you spend those latter years. And each one of us have the opportunity that our latter years will be comfortable, will be enjoyable. Isn't, and isn't that what God meant? <laughs> God never ever designed for people to suffer for the last 20 years of their life and just and then pass away and to the point where the passing of the way is a great blessing because they are in so much suffering. Hmm? He never meant for people to be on huge amounts of medication in the latter years of their life. No, no, no. And as I'll show you on Saturday morning, God never meant the brain to deteriorate. <laughs> Brains and bodies are deteriorating far too young. And remember, drugs never, never cure disease. They only change the form and location of the disease. The body is the only thing with the ability to heal you and I. And it will if you give it the right conditions. So the exercise is a very important part. Your fitness is not determined by how hard and fast you can go, but how long you take to recover. So if your first high intensity requires you four minutes recovery time, that's all right. It's not going to stay like that. Age has nothing to do with this. Got that? <laughs> Age has nothing to do with it. Do you know the trainers today for the athletes are finding that this interval training is so effective, you'll find they're all doing it. And it also means you only need to do 15 minutes instead of an hour jog. You can get more out of a 15 minutes high intensity than an hour jog. And I don't know many people that have got that hour. I've got too much to do. I just love it because I run out the door and when I get, well, Amelia and I, we dive in the creek every morning after we've done it and we need to because we're hot. <laughs> Sometimes we need to take a change of clothes when we get out of the creek. And often I'll do my last high intensity in the creek swimming against the tide. Once you start doing this, the feeling that you will get from it is so good. Your mind will be sparkier. Every cell in the body starts to work more effectively. And guess what starts getting burnt? Oh, it got rubbed out, those fat cells. 
And that's one of the reasons why it's so effective in weight loss. It's incredibly effective with diabetes because of the stimulation of more receptor sites, more insulin receptor sites, because of the stimulation of the pancreatic cells, the beta cells that make the insulin to revive. But when you're starting to do that morning exercise program and your glycogen stores get used up, where does the body going to go now for fuel? It goes to the fat cells. So exercise is essential. Every day, I do it every day. I never miss. I've got an appointment. Um, it's a little bit different here because of the time change, but at home, I wake at, I wake at, I usually wake at five, I usually walk at six, and I eat at seven. That's, that's my appointment. I have an appointment. And you know, when we make an appointment, we've got to keep that appointment, don't we? That's the easiest way to do it. But I have known many people that have had incredible change in their life through this. And recently I was shown the value of this because sometimes I only do three high intensities because I just haven't got enough time. And I was in uh, Georgia, in America, uh, about four months ago. And I was talking to a young man and he wanted to pick my brains. And I said, I'm free tomorrow afternoon. He said, I've got to do a mountain climb. Do you want to come? I said, yeah. Now, the guy he was walking with couldn't come. He said, do you still want to do it? I said, yeah. So he's picking my brains the whole time. Now, we're walking like this, an hour and a half. <laughs> now, I pushed myself because I didn't want to hold him up. And every now and then I said, let's look at the view for a while. <laughs> How long do you take to recover? until your breathing and your heart rate settles down again and then you can go it again. But I really did push myself. And it was winter and it was cold and my clothes were wet and it's not easy, I don't perspire easily. Coming down was a lot easier, but we got lost. And so <laughs> we were battling through the bush. We finally got home. I'm glad it's winter because the leaves were off the trees and you could see through the bush. I got home and had the best shower I think I've ever had. <laughs> And I thought to myself, I am going to be sore tomorrow. Not one bit of soreness. I couldn't believe it. Not one bit of soreness. And I thought, this is incredible. Sometimes I'm only 15 minutes in the morning. And yet that sort of training gets the body up onto a far more efficient and effective rate of running. Of running. So exercise, not negotiable. Again, if you're not fit and you find it difficult, just do what you can, but push yourself a little bit more every day. Your heart will get stronger, your lungs will start working better, and when your lungs work better, what are you going to get more of? Oxygen. The Framingham st Heart Study, very famous study, it's been done over 30 years, 25,000 people, so it's often quoted. It found that by the age of 50, people had lost 40% lung capacity. That's a bit scary. By the age of 80, 60% lung capacity has been lost. So 40% lung capacity is lost. Does that mean 40% of the cells can't get down to here? They can only run up here? How much energy is that going to give you? So what can you do to prevent uh, capac lung capacity loss? Interval training. What can you do to regain it? Interval training. <laughs> How many people from about sadly 40 up get scared when their body goes <laughs> you gotta do that that's how you retain it and that's how you also retain your abdominal breathing abdominal breathing gets more oxygen into the cells and as you can see that's all we need more oxygen it's the most vital element needed for life you just got to move you got to move fast you've got to push yourself till you think you're dying <clears throat> did you hear that Number seven, early nights. Early nights? What's this got to do with diabetes? Between the hours of 10 p.m. and 3 a.m., there are hormones released in our body that are responsible for rest and rejuvenation. So if you're looking at conquering your diabetes, you've got to go to bed early so that those hormones can be released and do their repair on your pancreas. In the winter time, it's between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. So very important to do that. 
Many people are going to bed late because of the screens. And when your eyes are on screens in these hours, that totally blocks your rest and rejuvenate nighttime hormones. It also increases learning capacity, also increases mood in the body. In my DVDs, I go into a little bit more detail on that one. But that's why early nights are important for any sort of repair and healing in the human body. Number eight. What I'd like to do now is I'd like to give you the sort of food to be eating to, to bring about repair in the human body. So this is a high fibre diet. So a high fibre diet, remember this, vegetables are high in fibre, high in minerals, low in sugars. And minerals are your healer, whereas fruit are high in fibre, high in sugars low in minerals. So for a diabetic, for someone wanting to conquer weight in the body, they need to go more vegetables, less fruit. And ideally, low GI. So in here we put all your low GIs. So low GI fruits, there's fibre. Vegetables, One lady said, isn't carrot high? I said, you'd have to eat a truckload of carrots <laughs> to get your blood sugar high. And all your, all your plant-based foods, so all your nuts, all your legumes, they're all high fibre, and all your whole grains. Now let me give you a list of grains that are the best grains. Your wholemeal rice, millet and quinoa, spelt quinoa, buckwheat. There are so many grains that we can pursue. Be very cautious of gluten-free cakes, gluten-free uh, breads because they can be, they can have very high glycemic grains in them and they're often loaded with sugar. So they're your best grains. Generous amounts of protein. So the best protein is found in your legumes. Let me give you a little tip with legumes. Most people don't know this. Let me tell you how I did the black-eyed beans for lunch today. I had them cooking in one pot. In the other pot I, pot, I had the tomato and the onion and the ginger and the garlic and the kale and the zucchini. And when the black-eyed beans were soft, I rinsed them and rinsed them and rinsed them and rinsed them. Did everyone get that? I'm washing away the dirty water. It is that water that causes most of the problems that people experience if they eat legumes. And when I've washed all the dirty water away, then I put my legumes in with my flavourings. For breakfast this morning, I had little dark blue lentils. They were cooking while I was running up and down hills. When I came back, I rinsed them again and again. The pot they were in had this scum around the edge. In fact, I scrubbed the pot clean, rinsed the lentils, put the lentils back in the pot, put oil, thyme, and salt with it, and some parsley. Ladies, was it delicious? Delicious. It doesn't need much. And I'm climbing hills in the morning. I haven't got time to be cooking fancy things in the morning. So your legumes, most people don't realise that. My husband had a problem with lentils when we first married. So what I started to do, they were well rinsed, I just give him a little bit, <clears throat> a teaspoon. A couple of days later, two teaspoons until eventually he can handle lentils quite well now. What about tofu? If you can get non-GMO, organically grown <clears throat> tofu, it's safe. Nuts and seeds. I think everyone should have about eight to ten nuts every meal. That's not hard, is it? 
Most people don't do it and then buy a packet of cashews and eat the whole lot, yeah? Just have a few every meal. It's a delicious ending to a meal. <clears throat> and healthy fats. And as I mentioned before, the healthy fats come from your nuts, your seeds, your avocados. And also, history shows us that the two oils that have been used for centuries and the people that use these oils experienced incredible health is the coconut oil and the olive oil. Now, Dr. Bruce Fife, he's written about five books on the coconut oil. Incredible information in those books. I think that man should be getting a Nobel Prize for the work he's done on coconut oil. Some say, but it's a saturated fat. <clears throat> Some say, but it'll give you heart disease. There is no proof of that. There is no proof of all of that. And you look at the island people. When Captain Cook arrived, he was confronted with the most magnificent specimens of humanity he had ever seen. Hmm? What did they eat every meal? Every meal. Coconut. What's the size today of the island people? Oh, they're very big. What are they eating? <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> what have they stopped? The coconut. It's not the coconut, it's because they've stopped the coconut. That's the problem. And low carbs. What about sugars? Now last night a man asked me about stevia. Now stevia is a sugar that does not get a pancreatic response with insulin. If you use too much it gets a bit of flavour, but I think it's a good idea to train the taste away from the sweets. If a person has a diabetic, they really have to be very cautious with even maple syrup or honey, the natural sugars. Some say, isn't sugar a natural sugar? Sugar is as closely related to the sugarcane plant as heroin is to the poppy plant. Nothing wrong with sugarcane. <laughs> it's the pure acid that's been extracted and that is the sugar. So for a diabetic, a little bit of sweetening, they could use stevia, also coconut sugar or palm sugar, which is the nectar, crystallized nectar from the flower in the of the palm. So it's also an unrefined sugar. What about dried fruit with a diabetic? Don't touch it. <laughs> Very high glycemic index. And remember, it's not forever, it's just until you conquer it. And once you've conquered it, then you may have a little bit. I have seen many conquer it. What about type 1 diabetes? I have seen type 1 and type 2 diabetes conquered. Sometimes if someone is doing all of this and still struggling, by the way, I'll also put, did I say low GI? 9. It's good to get a glycemic index and uh, know the, the low GI foods, but um, I have seen type 1 and type 2 diabetics conquer their diabetes. It takes a little bit of work, but the results are well worth it. But sometimes if there's not getting results, one have to check that they don't have exposure to mould and they don't have exposure to chemicals. So, to, so the things to be eliminated, I don't know whether I'm going to be able to do this. And this is one more that I have not yet mentioned and it's something that Australians and New Zealanders love and it's something that should be eliminated and that is caffeine. On, was that a groan? <laughs> there is a way to come off the coffee without suffering. People say, do you, do you drink coffee, Barbara? I say, no, I just watch the people suffer don't we, Amelia? Day one, Misty Mountain Health Retreat. More people suffer from caffeine withdrawals than any other withdrawal. We've had people come off ecstasy, heroin, methadone, marijuana, alcohol, cigarettes. No one suffers like the coffee drinker. But there is a way to get off it without suffering. And the reason why the diabetic must stop this is because it causes an insulin response. And we don't want that. 
say a person's on three cups of coffee a day, well, tomorrow, the first cup of coffee, they have half a teaspoon of coffee and half a teaspoon of something like Caro or Echo, those cereal alternatives, um, cereal beverages, you're familiar with that? And then a couple of days later, a quarter of a cup, I mean a quarter of a teaspoon of coffee and three quarters of the Caro or Echo. If someone's on three cups of coffee a day, in about 10 days they can be off it without any pain or suffering. If someone's having one cup of coffee a day, they often can be totally off it in five days. On Saturday morning, I'll be showing you how it causes a chemical imbalance in the brain, so a huge contributing factor to mental illness. And in Australia, the current figures are 50% of people suffering from mental illness. But an even scarier figure is 1,700 cases of Alzheimer's are being diagnosed every week in Australia, and it is a preventable disease. And if caught in early stages, it can even be turned around. That's good news. So these are the simple lifestyle changes that will ensure powerful weight loss and also a conquering of the diabetes. The pancreas has to be revived. It has to be allowed to recover. And when you implement these things here, you do that. Are there any questions before we close? Yes? Eggs. Eggs. Eggs are probably one of the safest of the, uh, of the uh, animal proteins, but they must be organic. Yes? Peanuts. peanuts are out. Why are peanuts out? Well, if you want to know why they're out, you can read the first chapter in the China study. And you might know that peanuts are banned in schools today. It's not the peanut, it's the mould that commonly grows on the peanut. And that mould is aspergillus and it gives off an it gives off a mould waste called aflatoxin, which is the most carcinogenic sub substance on the planet. If you grow peanuts, harvest them, not a problem. The problem arises in the storage. Now if you're feeling very sad right now because you love peanut butter, try macadamia butter, try cashew butter, and I think you'll find that they are they are just as nice, and yet they don't have the problem of the mould. There was one more question there. Yes? Yep. No, you don't put the salt inside, and the reason is that magnesium is a water-hungry molecule and it'll dissolve in there. But when you put it on your tongue and drink it down, when it's on your tongue, already the the uh, mucous membranes in your mouth are taking in those minerals so that when you drink your water, it can take it inside the cell. Because we were meant to drink pure water. So it's just having that little bit. You know, the cows have their salt, salt lick on the paddock. That they, they, well, adults, should, you know, humans should have salt licks too. No, because we don't, we should not drink with our meals because it waters down a hydrochloric acid. But you give a child a bowl of salt, oh, they love it. <laughs> They'll gladly take that salt. And after they've taken their salt, you won't have any trouble getting them to drink water. Yes? You will need to, to go, you can go to the web and get a, a glycemic index chart. But glycemic index is how quickly the glucose breaks down in your, from the food in your blood. And I think I mentioned earlier your berries, they're probably the lowest. And you had another question? Rolled oats. Rolled oats are a grain, and rolled oats can be great, but if someone's got a gluten intolerance, the oats may not work well. So you try the oats. And if you have oats, my suggestion is don't have them every day. Alternate them with the other grains. But if you experience bloating after breakfast, it's usually the oats. Yes? Almonds, excellent nut. With exercise, should you do it in the morning, it's the best time because you will reap the benefits all day long if you do it in the morning. But some people that get up very early for work, they might do it at lunchtime or after work. Yes? 
How fructose, very good question. I'm actually out of time, so I'll answer this very quickly and then we must end. Um, a lot of diabetics are going to fructose because it doesn't get an insulin response, but the only organ in the body that has fructose receptor sites is the liver. So this high fructose corn syrup that's going into a lot of breads and things today is causing fatty liver and causing liver damage because the only organ that has fructose receptor sites is the liver. So when there's an overload of fructose, the liver has to store it as fat. So there's your fatty liver. So fructose is not a viable alternative to a sweetener. But thank you for your attention tonight. Please bow your heads as I close. Thank you, Father in heaven, for this amazing body. And thank you for this information on how to treat it and how to get better results out of it. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Just seeing you tomorrow night. If you've got a heart, you need to be here tomorrow night.